Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and this is the Revo Point Pop 3 Plus. Let's have a look at what it can do. I don't want to spend too long on unboxing, some people take forever for this and it's never the most exciting bit, but I do want to cover things. Feel free to flip forward if you want to just skip it out. So we get the standard recessed case that come from Revo Point with everything fitting very nicely. You've got our head that we can use to do some practice 3D scans, just to make sure you've got everything working right. We have a rotating platform which makes it easy to scan objects from all angles and then we've got our standard handle which also acts as a tripod and you can raise it and lower it to make it easy to get whatever angle you need. And then finally, the most important bit, we actually get the scanner itself. It looks pretty much identical in size to the POP3. We've still got a range of lenses on the front and we've got six LED lights which you can set on and they'll flash in time with the scanning to make sure you get the optimum colour imaging that you want but I've also found it very useful to get into things like the recesses of darker objects or things with deeper recesses. Finally on the back you've got the connection point where you'll use to power the 3D scanner and then we have a play button and a plus and a minus so we don't have to do everything through the software on the computer. Flipping this over we also have a phone mount if you want to use your phone because it can connect to either your phone or your computer so it's useful to have that. And in advance, in case you do want to get the power pack that you can buy, you've got a space for that as well. Finally, we have some markers and the marker topper that can go on top of the rotating platform. But interestingly, and this is a change, we get this velvety bag. And inside this velvety bag, we have a calibration board. Now you do get a calibration board with the other Revo Point scanners, including the old POP3. But this one is, well, very nice. I think it's made out of some sort of perspex or maybe some toughened glass. And that means it's not going to fold or bend and we're going to be able to get really good calibration off of this board. Which I think already says something about the implication of what this scanner can do in comparison to the old POP3. Setup on Revo Point scanners is notoriously easy. Literally you just download the software and I'm going to plug in the power in the back. We're just going to get a red flashing light as it just powers everything on. And then once that's ready to go it is going to turn green. Once it's done that, all we need to do is just come to our software and we're just going to go to our Wi-Fi and then find that on the Wi-Fi. Click it, click connect, and then it's going to start connecting to our scanner. It will typically say it's going to take 30 seconds or so. It generally takes vastly less than that. There we go, we're connected. And then if this is your first time connecting it, it will ask you to calibrate it and you just rotate it around one way and then a different orientation and that helps set up the sensors that are in the 3D scanner and it means you're going to get more reliable feature tracking on this. So then we're going to go into new project and we're going to scan something new. So I thought I'd start by just doing a basic scan so we can see what the POP3 Plus can do. We'll do a colour scan, seeing as it's meant to have good colour scanning and I thought we'd scan a donut. This is sort of a blender joke. We often start by creating donuts in Blender. I don't know why it's become a bit of a thing. I think Blender Guru started it. But anyway, we'll do a scan of this instead. And we just need to fiddle with some of these features here, which we've actually got everything set up nicely. We want feature tracking because we're not putting markers down. We want an object, but it can do faces, which is really useful. And then we can fiddle around with the exposure settings by just moving this bar up and down and you'll see it shows red anything that's too bright or blue anything that's too dark. Now the thing that's really good about those buttons that we saw on the back is that actually we can not be near the computer and we can just press plus and move the exposure up or move the exposure down which is really useful if you're scanning something when you're on the other side of the room or you're maybe scanning a person in their face and you don't want to have to keep going to your computer and back. So it's really useful that it, you can do that via Wi-Fi, which means you just don't need any cables. So we've got this set up so it's in pretty much excellent scanning conditions. I generally have it somewhere between excellent and good, so we'll go to about there. And then we just can click Start to do this scan. So we're seeing it's picking a bit of the fabric up that I've got on the table. It's black, which generally helps but it's not going to be perfect, but the software will deal with that later. It's relatively easy to get rid of. I'm just caring about what's happening on the main scan in the center. And we can see we're picking up all of that detail really, really nicely. So once we've gone a full circle, what I'm going to do is just pause that and we've got already a really good looking donut. You can see this is made up of colored points at this point and we need to use the software to edit this together. Now, 
We could do multiple scans of this if we want to, but this is just to show off color and what it can do. I've got another video on that if you do want to check that out. Now what I want to try and do is capture the whole of the donut. I mean, whole starting with an H, not whole starting with a W. So we're gonna change the angle here. So we're just gonna go a little bit higher and I'm just gonna make sure that everything is still on that sort of excellent to good sort of distance. Now normally with another 3D scanner and software, I'd be a bit dubious doing this. I'd probably go through most of the processing and then stitch multiple pictures together. But the tracking on Revo point scanners is generally really good. And on the POP3 Plus is meant to be absolutely fantastic. And I think that's helped by the fact that we've got that orientation we do and those sensors tell it that it's now pointing slightly down. So all we're gonna do is carry on with this scan. So we'll click start and it'll say tracking loss, but it's picked up the features almost automatically giving us this vastly better angle. So that's how quick and easy it is to do this. So we're just gonna let it do one rotation and then we'll pause and complete without having to do multiple separate scans. Now realistically, if I was to scan the underside of this, we probably would need to do that as a separate scan. It's good, but it doesn't work miracles and there needs to be some level of overlap. So we've stopped that now. We can see we've got this donut and we've got pretty good coverage even inside that hole in the center. So let's click complete. At this point we can click one click and it'll basically do everything on automatic and try and work out what you want. And it actually does a very good job of that. But one of the great things about the software from RevoPoint is that we can do this individually ourselves and pick the bits that we want to get rid of and keep. And there's a lot of other software that doesn't give you this level of control so you don't get as much detail. What I'm going to do here is just use this lasso feature to get rid of this information at the bottom that we don't want and hit delete. And then I'm going to click isolation and just detect and then apply it. So it's getting rid of any loose different bits of information that it might have found and then detect overlap. And again, that's if you rotate more than once, you might find some overlap here. So let's click apply. Then we're just going to mesh it. Now, what I'm going to do is do some auto hole filling and we're going to put that down. So it's not going to do it for the biggest holes. And we'll just click apply and we'll have a look at how this looks. And there we go, here's our donut. Now we have filled the hole in, maybe we should bring that down a lot and then apply that again. There we go, we haven't got the hole taken out. But you can see how good this is. Look, you've got all of the frosting, you've got all these individual sprinkles on it. It's a really good and high detailed scan with really excellent color quality. Now while this color capture is great, I would say it's probably on par, maybe a little bit beyond the old POP3. I'm not sure it's enough that I'd go out and buy a new 3D scanner. So why are we getting this as the POP3 Plus? What does that actually bring to the table? So I've reframed the camera, so hopefully you can actually see a bit more of my face now, or at least my receding hairline. And we're gonna have a go at scanning this. Now, this is not really what the POP3 is designed for scanning. It's more fine in detail. It's more designed for something like your face being scanned. And this is a miniature, or at least part of a miniature from Games Workshop. But this should give it a bit of a challenge and we can have a look at the difference between the POP3 and what the POP3 Plus can do. Now, the POP3 scan has been going on somewhere here as I've been talking through this. And we can see the end results of this here. As you can see from the result of this scan, the POP3 does a perfectly acceptable job. There's nothing wrong with the outcome of this, especially seeing as, as I said, it's more fine detail than we'd normally want the POP3 to be able to scan. That's something you'd be using like the Mini 2 from Revo Point to scan if you wanted something this really fine in detail. So let's have a look at what the POP3 Plus does and we can have a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison. So when looking at the POP3 Plus in action, you'll notice that we have these zoom options on the left hand side. One, one and a half and two times zoom. And as opposed to the other 3D scanners that have come from RevoPoint where you still have this option and it will zoom in, what the POP3 Plus is doing is actually changing the way the light is focused coming out of the 3D scanner, which means that more light in a smaller location gives you more detail. Now this does have the negative side, as you can see when we start scanning, that we're scanning a smaller area as we go. That's gonna be a byproduct of this process. Now what you can do is actually just scan a larger object or a medium sized object with the scanner normally, and then you could change it to one of these zoomed in modes and then get a finer detail area in a place that needs it. 
So it gives you a lot of versatility when using this 3D scanner, which I'd say is a really nice addition just on the off chance that you're gonna need it. Now I'm gonna speed through the processing of this and I just wanna tell you that I'm doing exactly the same processing on this model that I did on the model from the POP3. So there's no difference in what I'm doing and it's using the software on exactly the same version of the software, which is 5.4.9. So I've not used the one click process with either of these, and I've done the same thing of removing the isolation, the overlap, and then just ending up with the mesh and not modifying the mesh in any way, shape or form. Now, if we have a look at these side by side at this point, you will notice that there is a difference between these two when you look at them. Again, this is not going into the level that the Mini 2 would in terms of something this fine in detail, but you notice that the detail is crisper. We're getting more detail on this iconography that's on the front of the scan, of the little holes and the rivets that we've got throughout the model, we're getting more depth and it's showing a sharper edge to it. And that's actually true for the rest of the model as well. Everything else appears to have a sharper edge to it, which is obviously really beneficial when this is a scanner designed for medium sized scans. And just to give this a sense of scale, I think it's worth mentioning that when I measured this, this skull is three millimeters across. So if you're looking at this on a big screen, and I'm looking at it at a big screen, I think it's worth bearing that in mind, the level of detail that this is actually getting for a medium sized scanner. So I guess the final question is, should you be considering the POP3 Plus if you're looking for a 3D scanner? And my answer would be definitely yes. I'm finding it hard to find some negatives in terms of what the POP3 Plus can do. Its feature tracking is absolutely outstanding. I don't think I've found a scanner that actually has better feature tracking than it. Setup's really easy, and that's made even easier by the fact that the RevoScan software is so easy to use while being really versatile in the outcomes that you can get from it. It's got a very, very nice workflow. Admittedly, I have used it for a number of years, but it is just very intuitive, and it does exactly what you want it to do. Now, at the time of recording this, the scanner's priced between 500 and 600 pounds. You can do the conversion to dollars if that's what you need to look at, but I think that's very reasonable. There are cheaper 3D scanners out there, but they are definitely far behind this in terms of their ease of use. And if you are looking for something cheaper, RevoPoint do also have a cheaper scanner available. It's called the Inspire, and it's a perfectly acceptable entry-level unit. I've got nothing against it. It just doesn't do what the POP3 Plus can do. The next question will probably be, if I've got the POP3, do I need to upgrade to the POP3 Plus? And my answer would probably be no, unless you've really got that fine detail niche and it's just slightly missing. If it was me, I'd be spending that money if that's where you needed to be in terms of scanning on say a Mini 2, or I'd be looking at saving up for something like the Miraco where you can do large scale scanning and really fine detail scanning because that will cover you, but it is more expensive. And lastly, just a thought to end on because I know I'm gonna get some comments in the comment section saying, yeah, but the POP3 was out a year ago. All of this change is happening too fast. And you know what, they are right. But that for me is the reason why I'd want to buy into a company like RevoPoint because they're constantly innovating and pushing the technology forward. And yes, that does mean in a year's time, there's probably gonna be a POP3 plus two or a POP4. I don't know why this wasn't the POP4 anyway, but I'm not in charge of how they name their products. But that for me is a good thing because as I said, I probably wouldn't have bought this if I had a POP3. I don't think it'd be worth it. And this was sent to me as someone who's got a YouTube channel to test out. I wouldn't have paid for it myself because I've got the POP3. But a POP4, maybe, because that might have something new and those two steps are something that I want to be interested in. And regardless of that, changes to the hardware means they are also constantly looking and updating the software. And they backdate that to work with all of their previous scanners. There's a reason that the RevoScan software is the best 3D scanning software that you're gonna find in a consumer price point 3D scanner. Don't get me wrong, other software has good things to it as well, but none of it works as a whole as well as RevoScan, and none of it is as seamless and gives you as much control. So yeah, I want to be part of a company or buying a product from part of a company 
that gives me that innovation because that's what's going to allow me to have the best technology going forward and the best software. If you disagree with that, feel free to go nuts in the comments section. That's totally fine. But for me, I think that's important. And there's a reason why people buy iPhones or buy Samsung phones or whichever choice they do. It's going to go out of date, but they're buying from a company that they know is constantly pushing things. So maybe that's something that would be interesting to you as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review and found it useful and understand the differences now between the POP3 and the POP3 Plus and what this is bringing to the table. Have a great day, guys.